So there's lots of things going on in the world. The series finale of Game of Thrones aired on Sunday. The Oculus Quest was just released. Oh, and our president is threatening to nuke other countries via Twitter again. So he writes to Iran, if Iran wants to fight, that will be the official end of Iran. Never threaten the United States again. Now, at this point, him doing mean tweets is not surprising to anyone. However, I don't want us to take for granted the gravity of what just happened. He threatened to annihilate another country, to wipe them out, saying it will be the end of them on Twitter. This is not normal. This is incredibly insane. And it was very unsettling to see him do this when it comes to North Korea. But now he's doing it to Iran. And we know over the past couple of months, him and the neocons in his administration have been saber rattling when it comes to Venezuela, looking for any and every reason they can find to militarily invade Venezuela, since economically, the pressure that they're putting on Venezuela and Maduro isn't working. But now it's clear that they've kind of shifted gears since the coup in Venezuela hasn't been successful. Now, I'm sure that they still want to invade Venezuela, but it's evident that they've turned their sights to a new target. And that target, obviously, is Iran. And it's absolutely terrifying to see the president of the United States send out this belligerent tweet. Um, it really is something that we shouldn't normalize or become accustomed to, but I get it. A lot of people see this and they just kind of shrug because we've all put up with this now for a couple of years. We've become desensitized right? But we shouldn't allow ourselves to become desensitized to things like this, because this is incredibly serious. So the question is, does he want war with Iran? Clearly, he is open to it. That's what the tweet indicated. However, in an interview with Fox News, he was talking to Steve Hilton, who asked this question. And Steve basically said, look, a lot of people liked you because in 2016, you were the non-interventionist Republican candidate. You were different from the neocons in the Republican Party. So are you actually trying to start a war with Iran or not? So he's going to go on here to answer Steve's question in the most baffling, incoherent way he will abruptly change subjects. He'll answer a different question than the one he was asked. Like, it's clear that the dude's brain is melting out of his ears. Like, he is losing it. He's absolutely losing it. And I don't even know what to take away from this interview. But nonetheless, let's watch it. Because maybe there'll be some information we can extract from this about whether or not we should prepare for war with Iran. The thing that I think a lot of people are worried about is that they heard what you said in 2016 and liked it when you said no more stupid wars. And then they hear these stories about troops and so on. I just don't want them to have nuclear weapons. And they can't be threatening us. And you know, with all of, uh, I just, I just with all of everything that's going on, and I'm not one that believes, you know, I'm not somebody that wants to go into war because war hurts economies, war kills people, most importantly, by far, most importantly. I think that if you look, when I went to North Korea, there were nuclear tests all the time. There were missiles going up all the time. We had a very rough time. Then we got along. We'll see what happens right now. Right now, I don't think I told them when I left Vietnam right. where we had the summit, I said to I said to Chairman Kim, and I think very importantly, I said, look, you're not ready for a deal because he wanted to get rid of one or two sites, but he has five sites. I said, what about the other three sites? That's no good. We're going to make a deal. Let's make a real deal. But they haven't had any tests over the last two years. It's zero. There's a chart and it shows 24 tests, 22 tests, 18 tests. Then I come and once I'm there for a little while, you mm -hmm. know, we went through a pretty rough rhetorical period. But once I'm there for a little while, no test, no test, no test. So let's see what happens. So but, I, I but just you cannot to... let Iran have nuclear weapons. I want to read you something Lindsey Graham said. Okay. Uh, your friend Lindsey Graham. Yes. Uh, he, he was in a magazine profile and he reported on a conversation he had with you. And he said that you said to him, the trouble with you, Lindsey, is you want to invade everywhere except the places I want to invade. Well, so my question is, where does he want to invade? But more importantly, where do you want to invade? I want to invade, if I have to, economically. We've created a much stronger country economically than when I took it over. When I took it over, we were heading south. Our GDP would have been very negative. Regulations didn't allow you to do. You know, yesterday, as you probably saw, I was in Louisiana, opening up a $10 billion LNG plant that would have never been approved under 
another type of administration, never. And now you have 10,000 people working there, $10 billion yeah. they invested. Uh, we have tremendous power economically. If I can solve things economically, that's the way I want it. So you, re you can reassure people you're not looking for some kind of conflict in Iran. And well, I'm the one that talks about these wars that are 19 years and people are just there. And don't kid yourself, you do have a military industrial complex. They do like war. You know, in Syria with the caliphate, so I wipe out 100% of the caliphate. That yeah. doesn't mean you're not going to have these crazy people going around blowing up stores and blowing up things. These are seriously ill people. I don't want to say, oh, they're wiped out, you know, ISIS. But I wiped out 100% of the caliphate. I say, I want to bring our troops back home. The place went crazy. They want to keep, they, you have people here in Washington. They, they never want to leave. I say, you know what I'll do? I'll leave a couple of hundred soldiers behind. But if it was up to them, They'd bring thousands of soldiers in. Someday people will explain it. Well, this but, is an but example. You do have you do have a group, and they call it the military industrial complex. They never want to leave. They always want to fight. No, I don't want to fight. But you do have situations like Iran. You can't let them have nuclear okay. weapons. You just can't let that happen. So I mean, there you have it. I don't know what to take away from that. That was incredibly difficult to follow. It's clear that he is having a difficult time collecting. His thoughts. He says, quote, I want to invade if I have to economically in response to a question about what countries you want to invade. Because Steve Hilton asked him, asked him the question, you know, um, Lindsey Graham said that him and you disagree on which country you should invade. And Steve says, well, which countries do you want to invade? Trump says, I want to invade if I have to economically. And he then shifts to talking about the economy. Oh, my God. He's like a toddler or like a dog. Like you have to try to struggle to maintain his attention. You got to keep snapping at him. Hey, we're talking about foreign policy. What are you doing? We're not talking about the economy currently. We're talking about foreign policy. Stay focused. It's insufferable. It's insufferable. He also said at the beginning of the clip there, I just don't want Iran to get nuclear weapons. Oh, well, wouldn't it be nice if there was some sort of agreement that stopped them from securing nuclear weapons? Yeah, it was called the Iran deal. And you ripped it up. But he goes on, at, or actually in the beginning of this clip, the one, the part that I didn't show you, he lies about the Iran deal, saying, oh, this actually makes it easier for them to get a nuclear weapon and we can't even in inspect them. You dumb idiot. The International Atomic Energy Agency was able to inspect their nuclear facilities and determine whether or not they were compliant with the deal. They were compliant. We're the ones who weren't complying with the deal. Because part of the reason why they signed on to that agreement with us, which was a multilateral agreement that included other countries, but they signed on to that agreement because we agreed to stop imposing sanctions on them. Well, we backed out of the deal and we reinstituted sanctions under Trump's administration. So if anyone isn't compliant, it's us. We're the ones not complying. We're the ones who are violating that deal. Now, he then talks about how excited people got when he announced that he'd be bringing the troops home from Syria. Except the problem is you haven't followed through. You announced, we're going to bring the troops home. And what happened? Are the troops home? Are we out of Syria? No. So he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. On one hand, he'll denounce the influence of the military industrial complex and all of their warmongering. And on another hand, he'll talk about, well, you know, if we have to, on Twitter, I'll end Iran. I mean, he can't keep his story straight. He just, he doesn't, he doesn't have a core driving foreign policy philosophy. And it's infuriating, right? Because this is incredibly important. People are watching in terror as you tweet threats of nuclear annihilation to Iran. And when you are asked... Very point blank, whether or not you want war with them, we can't even get you to focus for two seconds. You start talking about the economy. What is wrong with you? I mean, Jesus Christ, if anyone has not been fit to serve, it's Donald Trump. He is not fit to serve. And it's not because I disagree with him politically and I'll, uh, you know, disagree with the policies. I'm saying mentally, listen to him speak. It's incoherent. He's babbling. This is a buffoon. And it's not just that I think he's unintelligent and has a low IQ. I genuinely believe that mentally, 
He is not capable of dealing with these types of situations, hence why the neocons in his administration, like Mike Pompeo and John Bolton, are able to take advantage of him and essentially steer the ship because he doesn't know what's going on. He's losing his mind, literally, quite literally. So I'll leave that there. There's really no um, nice, clean conclusion to this video. I can't wrap it up nicely with a bow on it because I don't know what the takeaway is. He threatened Iran on Twitter and then when asked about, you know, his warmongering in an interview, we really didn't get any clear-cut response. So I don't know where we are, but just be wary of the fact that we may very well be starting a war with Iran, which would be horrible. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>